Okay, this should be a relatively short video. I am just going to show you a few things to be aware of, and it's gonna be a lot of show and tell because I'm not gonna draw these graphs. Um, we're looking at graphics in the media in particular and a few cautions about graphs. So I want you to be um, always thinking whenever you see graphics and, and think, oh my gosh, what, is, what are they trying to do and does it make sense the way they've got it and that kind of stuff. So for instance, here is a graphic right here and it's called um, a stacked bar graph. Okay, and the reason why is because they have a couple of things stacked on top of each other. The dark one is supposed to be men, the yellow one is supposed to be women, and it says, if I look up here at my title, the median annual er earnings of full-time workers ages 25 and up by educational attainment and gender. Okay, so if you look at our axes, okay, down here in the bottom is the average, the median, not average, I'm sorry, the median, which we know means the middle, okay? So what guy is right in the middle, half of the people are above it, half the people are below it, um, annual earnings. And I've got 20,000, 40,000, 60,000, 80,000. And when you see this, remember, you need to look at that um, labeling system that they've got and make sure that the space between each hash mark here is related to the correct thing. So here it's between zero and 20,000. That's 20,000 is the gap. If they suddenly go from 20,000 to 100,000, that can be misleading, right? And sometimes whenever people want you to think something like pollsters or this or that, they might accidentally on purpose mislabel their graphs, right? So be sure you check these labels and these axes and make sure they make sense. Here on the bottom, we've got people who are not high school graduates. So that could mean that they're still in high school or it could mean that they dropped out of high school, right? Um, people in this category, a lot of times we know that they're probably working fast food or they could be, I don't know, at a grocery store. You know, they're, there's, they're not necessarily using a lot of high level skills and that's okay for like when you're a teenager in high school, right? That's the kind of job I had. Uh, I was a waitress, so <laughs> there you go. So anyway, if you're not yet a high school graduate, for women, they normally make about $21,000 a year, and this is supposed to be full-time workers, right? Ages 25 and up. So these people are not still in public schools. They just dropped out, basically, is what happened. And for men, it's 29000 Okay, we see automatically, for whatever reason, it seems like men are making more than women, okay? If you're a high school graduate, a woman is supposed to make around 30000 and a man is supposed to make around um, 40000 Now, this data was income data from 2014, so it's a little bit old, but it takes a while to gather the data and then to put it together, right? So just be aware of that. If you have a little bit of college, maybe you're, you've got a, you're working on your associate's degree or something like that. Um, maybe you've got some dual credit, high school credit or something like that. Then, but you don't have the degree yet, then you might be expected as a woman to make around 34,000 if you're working full time. Um, or 46, almost 47,000 as a man. So we see over a $10,000 um, gap there. And we see it keeps on happening, right? No matter where we are, associate's degree, bachelor's degree, master's degree, doctoral degree, if you have a doctorate degree, women might make, in 2014, around $80,000. I don't know where they're getting their data because it is not from Commerce, Texas. Um, <laughs> but the, the median income, they're saying it's 80, and for men, it's 100,000. So we're already at more than a $20,000 gap there, right? That's a doctoral degree. And then up here, we have professional degrees. So um, sometimes I get students who ask me, well, what's a professional degree? So think about maybe a CPA, or a lawyer or something like that. So it's not the same as a doctoral degree, but it's a professional degree. It gives them a particular certification 
or licensing or something like that that allows them to clearly make a lot more money than us people with doctorates made. So uh, for women, you would be expected to make around 91000 and men 121000 So for the professionals, it's a $30,000 gap. Okay. So I don't see anything misleading about this graph. I don't love the way they stack their bars, <laughs> okay? And I would have liked to have seen the number, the, the dollar amount go up instead of go across. So that's just me, but um, now you know, okay? To me, the income is dependent on what we're saying here as far as their education. So this should be flipped and the education should be down here on the bottom and the income there. Now, clearly they didn't do that, and it's okay, it works, but normally speaking, remember the independent variable, which is whether or not you have a degree or what degree you have would be here, and the de dependent variable of how much you're making should go there. All right, they also have something similar to that where they're looking at multiple um, line graphs here. And this happens to be a time series because they're going from like 1995 to 2015. And this is unemployment rates. And we see a big jump right here around 2008, 2009, 2010. Um, so you wonder what in the world's going on there. Um, I don't remember anything significant that happened in 2008. Oh, there was there was a um, there was a market crash then, wasn't there? A stock market crash. Yeah, I think there was. I don't see it in the write up for this particular stuff, but uh, so clearly there was a lot of unemployment that happened right there at that time. But you can see the trends, and again, they're doing different things. So this orangey one is for people who are with bachelor's degree or higher. Um, the green one is you have some college or associate's degree. The blue is high school graduates, and the brown is they did not graduate. And again, it's 25 or older, so these are dropouts from high school. Okay, so, um, and that might be what you would expect is that people with a bachelor's degree or higher, maybe their unemployment level is lower than people who dropped out from high school. So maybe that's what we expect. Um, so there's just all kinds of weird data graphics that you see in here. This one is interesting to me because it's supposed to be the federal government spending, and it's called a stat plot or a stat graph. Um, so you have to consider that the 100% is the total distance here. So this is supposed to be 100% of the money the government spends, the U.S. government. And this is a timeline, right? So they've got the years under here. So in 1966, national defense, which included veterans, it says, was somewhere around 44, 48% of what we spent our budget on, okay? Now in 2016, this is the year down here, it's around, what does it say? Hmm, maybe around 20% of the budget is vet, uh, National Defense and Veterans Affairs. But we see some other stuff happening here. Back here in 1966, we didn't have Medicare apparently, that might have been the year it started, and we see it becoming a bigger and bigger chunk until it's this portion. Now, I have to be careful because I need to know what this portion is percentage-wise, right? And I can't just do this and say it's 40% because there was this 20-ish percent that was in there. So I need to kind of figure out how big is that and then figure out what percentage it is. So maybe it's like 17% or 18% uh, of the 2016 budget was spent on Medicare. Okay, something similar is going on here with the Social Security, although we see it widens out. Um, it's definitely more in 2016. It looks like maybe about 30% of the budget, whereas in 1966, it was only maybe 15% of the budget. So it's definitely more spent now on Social Security than it was back then. Um, interest on debt, same kind of thing. We see it widens and then it gets narrow. And then all other. So that's kind of a huge gap in there for the all other. Um, think about that. And so right here in 1966, it's about 30% of the budget that they're saying 
from 70% up to 100, so you're going to have to do a little subtraction there. It's about 30% of the budget that they're saying is other. Well, what does that include? Well, anything else. So if there's road maintenance on a interstate highway that's federal government, if there's something for the national um, education, like federal grants, Pell grants, things like that, that's part of the federal government, that's other stuff, right? Um, National Science Foundation, that's other stuff. Um, taking care of the Smithsonian <laughs> Museum, that's other stuff that the, that the federal government does. So it's interesting to me that they split it into one, two, three, four categories and then everything else. So anyway, just be really careful as you're reading through some of these graphics and seeing some of the things that they do. Um, some of them are weird um, things. So, geographic data that vary continuously, such as temperatures, may be displayed on a contour map. You know, there's all kinds of graphics. We clearly haven't covered all of them, and that's okay. Um, yeah, I don't love these three-dimensional bar graph things that they put in, but you'll see those from time to time in, in different... Um, essay grade data you'll see people do those kind of three-dimensional stuff so there's all kinds of other graphics you can do just be aware of it and then there's just that cautionary word be careful to make sure that you know um, exactly what you're putting exactly what you're seeing so this says women as a percentage of all college students and what we've got here is <laughs> the smallest percentage of women uh, a smallest percentage of students that are women was 30% in 1950. So this first graphic is a little misleading. And the reason why is because it starts down here at 30 and you see this plunge, <laughs> okay? So women were 40% of um, college students in the 1910 and they went up to maybe 45 percent and then it dropped down to about 30 percent in 1950 and then it starts grow growing and here it looks like we're almost uh, all of the people almost all the people in college look like they're women right but again watch your scales and be really careful because look over here it starts at 30 and the highest percentage is 60% so this just means that we're kind of maxing out women in the 2000s are maxing out around 50 what six percent of college students so it does it, it's very misleading this graph next to it is actually meant to be more realistic and notice that my scale going up starts at zero and goes up to a hundred percent if you're doing anything as a percentage you should show the whole thing right so I need to see what does zero percent look like what does a hundred percent look like and this looks much more moderated right so and we can see oh 40 percent up down to 30 up to about 57 percent okay and what's going on in here there's this drop that comes down and then it goes back up um there was probably this is a little bit after world war ii right and we had uh, women going to college and then in world war ii in the 1940s um women quit going to college and went to work right so we see it kind of drop out and then maybe the men came home from war and they said oh i want you at home with me or whatever and then slowly it starts going back up as we get into the 60s and 70s and the hippie movement and things like that where more women's lib and stuff like that so now it seems pretty much like it's flattening out right like women are somewhere around 50 to 55 percentage of college students and that's true even at AM Commerce you can see that um, we are right in that area and that data looks like it went um, to about 2015 I don't see where it tells me but it's above 2010 for sure so all right so just be really 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 careful whenever you're um, looking at things and saying oh my gosh um, this graphic looks like such and such and such and such, you know. Well, be aware. Just be aware. Okay. Here, this graphic, um, we're talking about 
uh, changes in college costs, percentage change from the previous academic year, and it's from 2001 to 2002 and so on. And it looks like, if you look at it, be careful, because whenever you see this, you just see the line dropping, and you assume what? Costs are going down, right? But that's not what this is saying, so be careful. So the change from the previous year was a positive here, 4%. This year, up here, whatever this was, what, 2003, the public school change was around 13, 14%. This year, it's still a positive change where it comes down. It dipped so low. Psh, it's still a positive change, but it's only about 5%, which is a decrease in the change <laughs> from 12% to, to about 5%, but it's still a 5% increase. Does that make sense? If it was actually, if, uh, and think about it, winter college costs going to go down. Probably not happening, right? So, but if it was a negative, what? It would be down here. Like it would drop below this axis the way that they're showing it. So just be aware of that. And they have the public schools here and the private schools here. And when you look at that, you think, oh my gosh, the public schools cost so much more and that kind of thing. But again, it's very misleading because this is the change in the cost, right? So what this means is that public schools have changed a lot, whereas private schools are a little more just steadily increasing. The second graph is actually a better show of what's going on here. So it's actual college costs instead of the changes, or and this was a percentage change, which is crazy. So the actual college cost, again, blue is private, brown is public, public colleges. So the actual cost in 2000, 2001, to go to public four-year college for a year was less than $5,000. But for the private school, it was more than $15,000. Okay, so think about that compared to what you're seeing here. It looked like public schools were way above the private, right? But they're not. That's the change. This is the actual costs. So this, to me, is more informative and more useful. But sometimes you might see some weird graphic like this first one, and it's whenever somebody's trying to get some weird point across. The other thing I see is in the blue, the private schools. It's clearly increasing in cost every year, right? Because that's the actual cost. Until this year, 15-16, it's over $30,000 for the actual cost for a private school. Whereas the actual cost for a public school in 2015-2016 is still expensive, but it's less than $10,000. Okay, so it's about a third. And actually, it depends on what school you're going to. These are just private schools in general, like Abilene Christian or something like that. But if you go to an Ivy League school like um, Harvard or Yale or those kinds of things, go go tour one of those campuses one time, and they'll tell you that their, their cost is like $50,000 a year. So, of course, they have scholarships for people who don't have a lot of money. But if you're talking Ivy League, it gets more and more and more expensive. So the idea here is just be careful. <laughs> be careful when you see a graph in the media, online, etc etc always be suspicious is what I would say <laughs> okay check their labels check their axes okay make sure they are counting at an even rate etc etc If one gap on the axis is 5,000, but the next one that's the same gap where it presents 100,000, we're in trouble. Um, so watch out for that. Look at their labels. Be suspicious. Always analyze what you are seeing. Okay. Always, always. And check, think, is that an appropriate graph? Is it an appropriate way 
to show that data? Is there a better way? Something that might have shown you that data better in a, in a, in a more realistic way or whatever? Check their scales. Check the scale on the axis. Is it even? Is there missing data? If it shows percentages, do you see zero percent and 100 percent? Or is it like a zoomed in version like that one graphic I just showed you a minute ago? So, you know, I want you to actually be able to look at that and think about it and say, hmm, does that, does that make sense? Um, is there a key or a legend? To help you decipher what they're trying to tell you? Especially if it's one that's got the stack stuff or something like that, you know, is, is it easier or difficult for you to tell um, the different lines apart or the different bars apart or whatever they're doing? So really, I want you to be very analytical about this. I want you to say, hmm, are they trying to get one over on me? Are they trying to, to, to tell me something that's... Um, accurate or not and then use your best judgment to decide for yourself if you can trust that d the graph okay because sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. So if you don't feel like you can trust that graphic, maybe you need to go dig a little deeper and find uh, where do they have the raw data. Maybe you can find the raw data or something like that and make your own graphic and see, oh, does my stuff compare to theirs? Does it make sense? So, um, you know, don't just take their word for it. Go back and look up that study or whatever it is that you need to do so that you can uh, possibly understand and and justify it for yourself do i like it or not all right that's it for this material thanks have a great day